In some of my previous lectures, I have talked about how the stress and strain can be related in case of an isotropic rock. And then we have looked at the fluids behavior, Newtonian viscous and non-Newtonian viscous behavior very briefly. Then we constructed the matrix and looked at the hook solid behavior. Then we also looked at the anisotropic material. Here we are going to see the material under this heading the poroelasticity issue. In this case, we are thinking that there is a rock which is porous, there are pore spaces and those pore spaces are partially or completely filled with some fluid which can be water, which can be hydrocarbon. There can be more than one fluids also. So in this discussion, we are not going to cover the non-porous rocks or the porous rocks which are dry, those are out of the discussion today. So a few basic things we will recollect. By the way, this poroelasticity issue related serious paper came from Biot in the year 1941 and then several corrections of Biot's model has been made. Now looking at the basic things, we start with this equation Vb equal to Vm plus Vp. The bulk volume of the rock or sediment can be called Vb, Vm is the volume of the solid material. So for sedimentary rock, this includes matrix, cement and the grains, everything, all the solid materials and Vp is the volume of the pore space. So naturally this relation holds true. Now the porosity can be defined as Vp divided by Vb and the porosity can vary from 0 to less than 1. Porosity equal to 0 means that the rock is completely solid, there is no pore space available. In other words, the Vp is equal to 0. The void ratio can be defined as Vp divided by Vm and you can find out easily that E, the void ratio is equal to phi or the porosity divided by 1 minus phi. You can also find out with little effort that phi inverse minus E inverse is equal to 1. The void ratio can become 0 when the Vp is equal to 0 or it can be more than 0, some positive number. So as it is written E as a function of phi, you can also write phi as a function of E, write down that equation. Now with this basic background, we are going to define the compressibility of the such porous material where there is fluid present in the pore space and that is also exerting pressure. So what is the formulation of the problem? Imagine this is the considered rock material and these are the two pore spaces. There can be more than two also, but just in the drawing it is shown as two pore spaces. The total volume of these pore spaces equal to Vp. So this volume plus that volume and if there is any other pore space, all those pore spaces can be added up Vp. Vb is the total bulk volume of the rock material and Vm is only the solid component. So as I wrote earlier, we can write here just to recollect Vb equal to Vm plus Vp. We consider that this material, solid material is isotropic in nature. Now in this body, basically on the same diagram, I am putting PP, pore pressure, which is acting within the pore space, there is some fluid, imagine, and it is giving a pore pressure in all directions. And this rock is also under a confining pressure, PC. We can see that PC and PP are in opposite direction to each other. Now we are going to see how Vb and Vp are changing with change in Pc and Pp, with change in Pc and Pp. This is the starting point and here onward we come into the definition of the compressibility and these are the four equations, we need to understand them very well. Cbc equal to minus 1 divided by Vib del Vb del Pc. 
C P C equal to minus 1 divided by V I P del V P del P C P P. C B P equal to 1 divided by V I B del V B del P P P C and C P P equal to 1 divided by V I P del V V del P P P C. What does this mean? Here P P remains constant that means under a constant pore pressure only the confining pressure is changing. So, del P C is working basically P P is constant and here in these equations P C is constant. P C constant means the confining pressure on the rock is constant, but the pore pressure is changing. How the pore pressure can change? From outside fluid can come and get inside the pore space leading to pressure, increase in pore pressure or fluid can go away if the pores are interconnected due to some pressure gradient leading to reduction in the pore pressure. Now let us look at C B C. The first suffix B you can find the first suffix over here V B. This means what? C B C is a compressibility factor which takes into consideration change in V B with change in P C due to change in P C that is given as a ratio and then per unit initial V B here I superscript stands for the initial magnitude. So, in this way the first suffix has been demonstrated you can also find in case of C P C what happens how the V P is changing with change in P C and where is this C suffix it is over here when I say B C the second suffix C is over here and coming back to this equation C P C equal to minus 1 divided by V I P del V P del P C at constant P P. Now, let us look at this equation C B P equal to 1 divided by V I B. The first suffix B indicates change in V B that is being considered when the second suffix P indicates that P P is being changed that means change in V B with change in P P at constant P C that is written and then 1 divided by the initial V B V I B. Now, we will look at C P P the first suffix P means we are considering the change in V P and the second suffix P means we are considering the change of P P. P P can increase or decrease because of that increase or decrease V P will accordingly change. So, del V P del P P if we can find out by some mechanism that fraction is to be stated over here at a constant P C and divide this by V I P that is the meaning. So, these actually these four equations can be represented in this way C M N equal to 1 divided by V I M del V M del P N P T. Let us try to understand and maybe we can compare this equation which basically represents the four equations with this one for easy comparison. When m is equal to p you can see I write v i m as v i p. When m is equal to p I write here del v m. So, p here it becomes del v p. Take the second suffix n when it is n I write del p n and here when this n is equal to p I write here del p p and there is a term which is as a suffix of this first bracketed expression that is the constant one p c which is not involved anywhere in the equation. So, I take here p t as if this t is equivalent to c. Now, in the same way you can compare this generalized equation with that briefly I can say m is in this case b. So, del v m becomes del v b 
n in this case becomes del p n. So, second suffix p in this case becomes del p p. Compare with this, this and that the general equation and the specific equation m in this case has become b in that case. So, 1 by v i m del v m becomes here minus 1 by v i b del v b. n in this case has become c. So, here del p n becomes del p c. Now, take this equation here m is equivalent to p. So, 1 by v i m del v m becomes here minus 1 by v i p del v p. n here is represented as del p n. So, here c the second suffix is represented as del p c. In this expression, in this expression p t term is not involved, it is outside and you can see in this expression what I am circling out there is no p p term and it is outside. Here there is no p p term and that is kept outside. Here there is no p c term and that is kept outside. Here there is no p c term and that is kept outside. So, in this way the general equation and the specific equations are explained. There are four specific equations. We can clearly understand that we are considering a case when P p is fixed, the pore pressure is fixed and P c is allowed to change, P c is allowed to change. Or we can take another condition when P c is fixed, this confining pressure on the rock is fixed and only P p is changing del P p and del P p there and the expressions are given. In these four expressions, we have nowhere stated what if both P p and P c change that is not there. So, a point to the viewers, can you find out or is it possible to find a compressibility expression when both P p and P c change? Is it there in the literature? If not, can we deduce? Now, let us understand why we are putting a negative symbol in case of CBC and CPC, whereas in case of CBP and CPP there is no such negative symbol. We have to understand that in this specific situation PC and PP are in opposite direction. So, imagine PC is increasing, if the rock is compressible the rock can compress very little. And if PP is increasing, and if the rock is compressible or extendable, the rock will extend a bit. Conversely, if P c is reduced, the rock's behavior and the if P p is reduced, the rock's behavior will be opposite to each other. Because of that, we have put minus symbol in these two cases where P p is constant and say P c is increased. And in these two cases, C b p and C p p where P c is constant only p p is changing say it is increasing then the rocks behavior will be opposite to this extension compression compression to extension. So, therefore, these negative signs have been given if one likes one can also put here plus 1 and write here minus 1 and the numerical term wise these minors can also be avoided if required. We may see the use of this minus sign now let us look at what if P p is equal to 0? In these two equations where the P p is constant, no change in the equation will happen because P p is 0, so that means it is constant, the equations remain as it is. Here we may write P p equal to 0 or we can write 0 here or we can completely delete P p from here. And in these two equations what change will happen? If the P c is already constant, the confining pressure is already constant and there is no change in P p that means on the rock body there is no stress being applied. In that case the V b is not going to change just to recollect what is V b. V b is the bulk volume of the material, the constant pressures at the outside and at the inside 
there is no change in pore pressure happening. So, that means if P p remains constant, V p will also, V p and V b will remain the same. So, in that case, it appears to me that these term, these two terms will become 0 and C b p and C p p will become 0. Let us compare these four equations in another way. C b c and C p c, here C is the common suffix. That means, del p c is the common denominator within the bracket. And here C b p and C p p, here p is the common second suffix and it is reflected by del p p and del p p in both the cases. Now, let us consider this equation and that equation. What is common between them? B c and B p, B is common. That means, change in the V b is being considered. You can see V b and V b over there. Same thing has happened over here, change in V b and it is also an expression of V b over there. Now, let us take C p c is equal to this expression and C p p equal to that expression and what is common? We can clearly see that the first suffix p is common in both the cases and that is well reflected in the right hand side by this initial V p and that is a change in V p. So, also here the initial V p and then the change in V p. So, we have understood the equations, we have compared them with the compact form, we have compared these two equations what is common and what is the manifestation in the right hand side. Same thing we did with these two equations and then we also took these two equations and saw what is common and what is uncommon and then we took these two equations and saw what is common and what is uncommon. So, we have defined the four compressibility factors in relation to porous rock and that the pore has got fluid. We are going to define the bulk strain increment d epsilon b. We need to understand what the suffix b means. As was done here, c b that means, we are dealing with the change in V b or the bulk volume. So, that is why this word bulk has come, the bulk volume is being considered. How the bulk volume related strain happens? By the definition of the strain parameters, it is the change in the V b per unit original V b. The initial V b is called V i b over here and a negative symbol has been given. Now, assume that this V b change is happening both because of this C b c and the C b p both are involved. That means, in one situation we are thinking that p p is constant and we are calculating C b c. In another situation we are thinking that let p c be constant, the confining pressure be constant and we are finding out the C b p. Both suppose p p and p c are changing within the rock. Suppose both are increasing or decreasing, what will happen? So, this minus d v b divided by v i b can come from here, del minus del v b by v i b. This del is written here as d. For example, this del p c, this del will become a d over here. So, I come here minus d v b divided by v i b will be equal to c b c multiplied by d p c, c b c multiplied by the d p c. Now, imagine p c is constant and p p is changing and also think that I am changing this del into d. So, del v b becomes d v b, del p p becomes d p p. Then what happens? Then d v b v i b equals to C b p multiplied by D p p. So, that is stated over here. Why this minus symbol? Because I put a minus over here, here already was a minus symbol. So, nothing was to be done, only I took C b c multiplied by D p c and wrote here. Whereas, here there is no minus symbol. So, the C b p multiplied by D p p will be equal to d v b divided by v i b. Now, take minus in both sides and then bring it over here. 
Similarly, we can define the pore strain increment. Here, d epsilon p, what is the meaning of the first suffix? As we did here, epsilon b and we explained epsilon p, the first suffix here will bring us over here CPC and CPP. That means we are dealing with change in VP. You can look at this equation and recollect whenever we are taking the first suffix, we are talking about the V and that suffix Vm. So, here Cp, P was the first suffix and here we are writing epsilon P, P is the first suffix. So, in this case how the Vp is changing that is being stated and we are calling it this expression which I am going to explain as the pore strain increment. Now, by the definition of strain it is the change of the parameter per unit the original parameter. So, we write here minus dvp vip i is the initial and we will now take help of these two equations to find it out. As done in the previous case, now instead of del let us think about d. So, this has to be thought as dvp and dpc this has to be thought as dvp and dpp. Now, cpc multiplied by vip, now cpc multiplied by dpc will be equal to minus dvp divided by vip. So, that is stated over here. CPC multiplied by VIP. So, here was a minus symbol and that minus was there. So, I just took the expression and put it here. Here there is no minus symbol you can see. So, what is the minus DVP divided by VIP component coming from this equation? It will be CPP multiplied by DPP that will be equal to DVP divided by VIP. So, a minus was brought over here and we write that CPP multiplied by DPP. So, in this way the pore strain increment has also been stated. Now, let us see how the pore strain as a percentage varies with confining pressure. Confining pressure we have recognized as PC. So, it is P c being plotted on the x axis. 7 and 8 are written, this is basically 7 multiplied by 10 cube P s i, this is 8 multiplied by 10 cube P s i, pore strain as a percentage. So, it has been found through experiment for certain rocks, this is the graph. So, it is not a straight line. Similarly, one can plot C p c versus the confining pressure. Here it is 7, this point is basically 7 multiplied by 10 cube P s i and here also a nonlinear behavior has been found. These are from the experimental studies. In the context of the confining pressure P c and the pore pressure P p, we can represent the stress situation by two numbers d p c comma d p p kept inside bracket. So, 0 comma d p p means no change in P c with time. At the same time, Pc may not be equal to 0 and Dpc comma 0 will mean that Dpp is equal to 0. I am asking the students to write down a similar statement over there. What is the meaning of 0 comma 0? I am asking the students to write down. Note that if I write T comma T where T is not equal to 0, this does not always mean Pc is equal to Pp. For example, say P c is equal to 7, some unit P p is equal to 1, but D p c equal to D p p equal to 0.3. So, in that case, the stress condition we can write here 0.3 comma 0.3, but that does not mean that P c and P p were same before this D p c and D p p acted. Also, P c and P p are not same after the change of P c and P p has happened. So, T comma T does not guarantee that P c is equal to P p. Also note that 
T comma T does not necessarily mean that the body is not deformed. So, when I said the quest model questions you will be facing such things understand it very well. We will now define a few more parameters the compressibility of the matrix C m is equal to C b c minus C b p let us try to understand here b means C b c and C b p means we are essentially requiring these two compressibility equations where V b's change has been marked and also over here V b's change has been marked. Now, here we are writing as C m for the matrix materials compressibility that means we are excluding the pore spaces compressibility and for that m is written. Also note that this is not b this is m. So, C b c minus C b p will be equal to this expression minus that expression. This expression is true when p p is constant and this expression is true when p c is constant. If we know these two parameters from there we can find out the compressibility of the matrix. Now, let us look at the compressibility of the pore space C p. So, here we look at the four expressions and find out p is the first suffix for these two equations. So, we will take help of these two equations. It is equal to C p c this expression minus C p p that expression. The third important thing is P d can be defined as P c minus P p which can be called as effective pressure or effective stress or differential pressure or differential stress which I have already covered when I was discussing the more circles behavior how it shifts with changing pore pressure. P c minus P p may not be a good estimate of the effective pressure. P c minus alpha multiplied by P p can be a better estimation where alpha varies from 0 to 1. So, that is P d equal to P c minus alpha P p.